Bill, we've heard about the meek life. You just brought it. How does it feel to bring the meek life of looking good and eating steaks into the UFC with your first win? I feel good. We feel a little better with my beard, but uh, it feels amazing. Man. Did losing the beard cause you to take a little more damage than you thought? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, the uppercut uh, in the third round wouldn't have hurt anything if I had the beard. <laughs> Just kidding, of course it hurts. If you had a beer like Jordan over there, would it Oh, yeah, out? why Why does the reporter got to have it and not the fighters? It's uh, unfair, man. No, it looks good, man. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, you said that you deserve, and congratulations. Thanks, buddy. You, you deserved a lot of respect and credit for taking this fight. He's a big name opponent. You had a big win getting into the UFC, but when you were in there, massive crowd. You're facing Jordan Mean. What, what's going through your mind? Did you feel a little more nervous? Um, I, I was nervous for sure. Uh, but uh, nervous is good. Nervous makes you stronger and sharper, and it's supposed to be like that. You know, when I woke up this morning, you had jitters all over me. I was scared. I was terrified. I was happy. I was sad. You know, everything. And and then uh, as you warm up and as you enter here, it, it just feels amazing. And uh, you never really know if what you have is good enough until you face your opponent. Until the first punches, until you feel it lands, until you land on him. Uh, and then you understand like what, what kind of game you're playing. And my game was strong enough. So you, you said that Jordan was the best unranked alterweight in the world. How did it feel being in there with him and, and getting that win? Um, amazing. Um, he, Jordan is such a strong fighter and, and he's probably one of the worst fighters stylish mm -hmm. that I could face and uh, to manage to pull through that and, and get the uh, get, uh, 29 28 round is, is pretty awesome. How would you assess your performance? Were you happy with it overall? Uh, happy with it for sure but can it be better? Absolutely. Uh, I, had needed, I, I wanted to mix more takedowns in it. He took me down in the beginning and uh, uh, lost a lot of energy on that one, and I didn't want to get taken down again. And uh, I got a little passive and uh, stuff like that, but um, he got tired, and, and I managed to show that my cardio was better and, and that my strength was better. Uh, I, I screwed my, my rib in the first round, so I think my performance affected, got affected a little bit of that. So I, I got more to. What do you think Steve. happened? Um, he, he was uh, shooting for a takedown, I was scrambling to get up. And as I, I twisted, I, I felt it something pop here. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dude, that's How does it feel now? I'm painful. Yeah. Don't make me laugh. Are you, are you having a hard time standing? Uh, just a little uncomfortable. No, because, like, I mean, is it that painful? Yeah, it's painful here and painful in my legs and painful in my everything. So. Did that first round surprise you? Because it was a wild first round and he went for takedowns, which is not usual for him. Mm, I wasn't surprised. I seen... Um, uh, he was fighting a Brazilian, like, uh, I think, uh, like, first or second, second uh, UFC fight. And that's the fight I basically built my game plan on. That on the Matt Brown fight, because I saw him get tired and I saw him shoot for for takedowns and and not get it, get it and end up on the bottom and losing. And uh, I, I wanted to apply pressure to him, just go Viking on him, brawl, slug it out, and uh, and we did, and uh, managed to do the takedowns and and level changes and. Mix it up with everything. It's good. It's awesome. Were you surprised you couldn't finish Jordan? I mean, he has been finished before, but uh, he showed tonight he's got—he's still pretty durable up there. I—I I was not surprised that he was durable. Yeah. And if anyone says that, that's completely bullshit. Yeah. He's, uh, you know, who finished it? What? Matt Brown. Matt Brown. Uh, Tiago Alves. Hello, Matt Brown. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and you got Tiago Alves, who who could take a kick to the body like that? Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. It's like so. That he got finished a couple of times. I got finished a couple of times. I'm still standing here. Yeah. So uh, Jordan, Mina, like, like I said, he 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 got a lot more to offer this sport. Yeah. And even though he, he, his last two in a row now, he's gonna come back. He's gonna come back stronger. So for you, sure. what did you think of the uh, Canadian crowd out there tonight? Uh, they were really into it, especially in your fight with Jordan. Oh yeah. Um, you know they they didn't boo me. They they were. Of course, sharing him me him all more than me, but uh, I'm happy with that. Uh, they they were awesome, and uh, and they uh, you know I'm sorry I didn't do more damage on the ground and stuff like that, but my rib was kind of screwed, so I couldn't pass the guard and I couldn't get really the good ground pound that I wanted.
so you within the commission and not you know making you cut off your beard. How has your experience been in Canada this week? <laughs> Except the beard is yeah. awesome. Uh, had to fly in a couple of days early because of the jet lag. Uh, so next time, if the UFC pay my beard trim mm -hmm. and my two day or three day flight ahead, I'll be back. The jokes aside, uh, Emil, about the beard, it seemed to kind of mess with you mentally, and I can appreciate <laughs> that as a lover of beards. Did it, was that something that you had to get over mentally? Like, were you really down about the fact that you had to trim it? No. Um, Ah, not really. No, it's just a beard. You know, I would around. never, I would never. Yeah. The only thing was that, that they to told me that uh, late. They told me when I was on weight and waiting for the weigh-ins. And like, excuse me, sir, you need to shave your beard. And I'm like, haha, that's a good joke. Mm. And then and they didn't take any criticism of, of not telling me before. I'm like, okay, I'm not allowed to do drugs. I'm not allowed to, uh, to wear anything but Reebok. I'm going to weigh 170 pounds. And you can't have a beard. I think that should be in there somewhere. Yeah. But, but did you, you ask if you could braid it? Uh, no, push? I didn't. But um, no, I don't. I think so, because it's it's like if you could put like this is by the book too long. Oh, so how'd you get past them? It's just shorter. It's just shorter. Where did you go? I fold them. Uh, where did I go? You see this? Yeah. What happened? I went home. <laughs> Took did, it myself. You did it yourself. Yeah, I saw my Snapchat. Okay. Emil Valhalla. <laughs> So How are you uh, celebrating tonight after this one? Uh, I'm gonna, uh, you know, with you guys, standing here, talking shit with you guys, that's <laughs> yeah. fun. Getting some drinks? Uh, some drinks, drinks I don't know about, but I'll definitely go out to my Norwegian crowd. Uh, they got like 30, 40 people there coming all the way from Norway to support me and the Valhalla army with matching shirts, you probably saw them. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm gonna thank them for, for supporting me so much and uh, I don't know what to do when you win your UFC debut. I've never done it before. So. How important is the dynamic of being a successful Norwegian in the UFC, even though Norway is not necessarily a hotbed MMA country? Joachim Hansen was a perennial lightweight for years. You know, Lev Inamo was the first dude to beat Hodger Gracie in a major Nogi grappling event and became a UFC veteran, but those guys weren't able to win in the UFC. What does that dynamic mean to you? Oh, uh, you know, the, if it were for them, we wouldn't be here. For sure, like they put, uh, brought the uh, MMA to to Norway, and they deserve all the credit in the world for them. But now it's a new breed. Now we're younger. Uh, now we have developed that kind of style, and and to be the guy that fucking wins in the UFC is pretty awesome. And that well, if nothing else, you're carrying on the Joaquin Hansen kind of personality. If nothing else, kind of being uh, outspoken and a wild and crazy guy. Yeah, I like it. I know you just have to have fun. You have to be yourself. You know, if I would just stand there, like yes. Then nobody of you will talk to me. Like you know, like him. Sorry. Like you know, like him. <laughs> Is he like that? Yeah, he's, he's a bit he's, more austere. I, I think he's a funny guy, but yeah, sure. So you mentioned you want to go Viking tonight. Do you normally bring a, a an axe to the ring or ceremony axe? Yeah, they took my bear. They took my axe. <laughs> But uh, they didn't Did they take away my axe. Could, could you not get into customs, or is it in the, is it in the hotel room? No, it's in the hotel room. It's in the hotel room. Yeah, I, 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 the only thing I managed to do with it was do it where to the Facebook Live, and then I brought it to the media room, and they stopped me. And uh, yeah. So when you go out to celebrate, will you be bringing the axe with you? You know, I gotta make an application or something to rebook, make a rebook <laughs> axe or something. A rebook axe. Yeah, it'd be awesome. <laughs>